Hello dears, hopefully this will be your last class on gastrointestinal physiology. In this presentation we will be discussing about the fat digestion and absorption which is most commonly asked as a 5 mark question. Then we will be discussing about lipoproteins which is very important in clinical and also exam point of view. It will be asked as a 5 mark question. Uh, it is commonly asked as a 3 mark question but it could be asked for a 5 mark question. Then adipose tissue, it's also very important. It is a frequently asked three mark question. So go through the presentation carefully. Before going into lipid digestion, let us discuss the four different types of fats. One is saturated fat which is considered as bad cholesterol which is present in animal products like cheese, milk, meat etc. Then comes the monounsaturated fats which are considered somewhat as healthy fats. And they are found in avocados, peanuts, olives, etc. Then trans fats are again considered as worst type of fats. Present in beef, lamb, whole milk, cheese, cream, etc. Then polyunsaturated fats are considered as healthy fats. Your omega-3 fatty acids, omega-6 fatty acids, etc. are present. Comes under this heading polyunsaturated fats which are considered as healthy fats. So these are the four different types of fat. Next is regarding the chemical composition of fats which is very important in the digestion point of view. So triglycerides are made up of three fatty acids and glycerol. Phospholipid contain one fatty acid. Cholesterol and esters contain again fatty acids. But cholesterol do not have a fatty acid since its physical properties are so similar with the fat it comes under this fat heading. So these are the main fats which are included in the digestion of fats in GIT this we have already discussed in the previous classes in mouth you have one fat digesting enzyme it is called lingual lipase and it will digest the triglycerides into uh, diacetylglycerol and fatty acid then less than 10 percentage of fat digestion takes place inside the mouth and the stomach and so it is considered as unimportant. So in stomach you have one enzyme which is called gastric lipase or otherwise called tributaries and they also digest the triglycerides into fatty acids and glycerol. Then small intestine is a main site of fat digestion and absorption. So it has three enzymes mainly pancreatic lipase which is the best enzyme which is the most fast enzyme. And it will convert the emulsified fat into fatty acids and monoglycerides. Then comes the cholesterol ester hydrolase to digest the cholesterol esters. Cholesterol esters will be digested into free cholesterol and fatty acids. Then comes the phospholipids A2 to digest the phospholipids. And they will digest the phospholipids into lysophospholipids. And you can see some 2-3 more enzymes in Simbulinga textbook. You need to study that enzymes too. I am not mentioning because you need something for your reference, right? So, refer it from assembling a textbook, then join it, uh, write notes. And make a short note on this digestion of fat in GIT. Next is process of digestion of fats. Since this process of digestion of fats is little bit different from process of digestion of carbohydrates and proteins, you need to give a little bit more attention to the process of digestion of fats and it begins with the emulsification of fats. You know that the size of the fat globules are little bit larger. So in order for the pancreatic lipase or other lipases to act on these these globules it should be reduced into particles of much smaller size and of bigger surface area. So the process employed in uh, increasing the surface area or uh, uh, reduction in surface tension is emulsification of fats and who is emulsifying fats they are the lecithin and the bile salts present in the bile juice and what is the peculiarity of this lecithin and bile salts they have a polar end which is soluble in water and they have a non-polar end which is soluble in fat. And this polar end will remain soluble in the, uh, in the, in the, in the surrounding fluids while the non-polar end uh, they will uh, dissolve the fat globules in it. So that the interfacial tension between the fat globules becomes low. So when the interfacial tension is reduced what will happen is when the intestine moves or due to the intestinal movement the agitation this uh, big fat globules will be broken down into smaller, smaller, smaller fat droplets and that will increase the surface area of this fat droplets into a thousand fold. 
so that the pancreatic lipases can act on these fat globules. This whole process is called emulsification of fats which is very very important in digestion of fats. Next is fat digestion. We have seen that the big fat globules are broken down into small fat globules by emulsification and agitation. Emulsification of fats followed by agitation due to intestinal movement and the surface area has increased thousand fold and the pancreatic lipase is a water soluble enzyme and it will act on the surface of the fat globules only and so that is why emulsification of fats and uh, agitation uh, by intestinal movement is very important. Okay. And so this lipase will act on the surface of the body, uh, I mean surface of the fat globules and will convert the fat triglycerides into fatty acids and glycerol. But the process is highly reversible. So what will happen is if the end products are concentrated more, this will uh, join together to go back uh, and produce the triglyceride. So you need to remove the end products of the fat digestion immediately from the vicinity. So who is doing this function? Again, the bile salts are doing this function by forming missiles. So what are missiles? Missiles are small cylindrical globules 3 to 6 nanometers in diameter. And how are these missiles formed? About 20 to 40 bile salts. About 20 to 40 bile salts will aggregate together such that the sterile nucleus of the bile salts will be formed, will be arranged in the central portion and the polar group of the bile salts will be projecting outwards. So the central portion will be fat soluble while the periphery, the polar portion will be dissolved in the solution. So it will help to remain stable in the solution in spite of the big size of the missile. And what is the function of this missile? It will decrease the concentration of fat end products at the site. How? Because the end products will be dissolved in the central sterile group. And then it will help in absorption of the, uh, this fat end products in the intestinal brush border cells. How? Because the intestinal brush, brush border cells, again the cell membrane is lipid, right? So the, this, uh, this uh, fat globules can uh, easily pass through this lipid layer. So this missiles will uh, transfer this lipid soluble thing into the intestinal brush border and make it easier. So 97% of the fat digestion and absorption will take place only in presence of bile salt. So bile salt is a very important thing in lipid digestion and absorption. If bile salts are not present, only 55% of fat digestion and absorption will take place. Then there is another property called ferrying of missiles and what is it? Because the missiles are water soluble, there is a polar end, right? So, uh, the, uh, the non-polar end will be delivering the components of fat digestion into the in inside of the brush water cells and the missiles will be returning back into the chyme for the next absorption, for the next, soluble, uh, for the next solution of this end products of fat digestion. So, that process is called ferrying of missiles. So we have studied digestion of fat globules and we have noted that the lipids will act on surface only and then uh, uh, you need to remove the uh, end products of digestion immediately from the vicinity because the process is reversible. So you utilize the presence of missiles and missiles are formed by bile, aggregation of bile salts such that the sterile group will face towards the center so that it can, so, um, uh, it can um, solubilize the end products of digestion, fat digestion and the polar group will be facing towards the periphery making it stable in the solution and then it helps in absorption. So now the end products of the fat digestion uh, reach the inside of the enterocyte, right? So there, there is another enzyme called intracellular lipase in order to digest the rest of the monoglycerides into glycerol. Then what will happen is these will be taken up by the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. These fatty acids and glycerol will be taken up by the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and this endoplasmic reticulum will again synthesize new triglycerides. With this absorbed fatty acid and glycerol, the endoplasmic reticulum will be synthesizing new triglycerides and also it will be synthesizing an apoprotein. It will add an apoprotein to this and next is the formation of chylomicrons. So the chylomicrons are formed in the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus of the enterocyte. Its, its size is 0.08 to 0.6 micrometers 
and what all things are there in chylomicrons it is mainly formed by the triglycerides and this triglyceride is coming from where it is prepared by the endoplasmic reticulum by utilizing the absorbed fatty acids and glycerol okay so it is mainly formed by triglycerides it also consists of phospholipids arranged at the periphery with fat soluble portions towards the center so in addition to triglycerides chylomicron is having phospholipids 9 percentage then cholesterol 3 percentage and the apolipoprotein b 1 percentage and this apolipoprotein b is very important and it is coated on the surface of each globule and then this chylomicron will be released into the basolateral surface of the cell and from the basolateral surface of the cell this will enter the lymph lymphatic circulation through the central lacteal in the villi you will study the structure of villi in anatomy classes okay and through the central lacteals this chylomicron will reach the lymphatic circulation so the chylomicrons will reach the lymphatic circulation and uh, uh, it will reach the thoracic duct and then the thoracic duct will be drained into the veins of the neck so it will reach the blood circulation then short chain fatty acids are directly absorbed into the portal blood stream then how these chylomicrons are removed from the plasma so after one hour so you have food and then after one hour what will happen is the plasma will appear turbid due to the chylomicrons present in the plasma 2 percentage of chylomicrons present in the plasma and then when the chylomicrons reach the liver and adipose tissue this will be removed from the circulation uh, this chylomicrons will be uh, uh, taken into inside of the cell it will absorb fatty acids and glycerol phospholipids etc into the inside of the cell and will be stored in liver and adipose tissue liver and adipose tissue are the main storage depot of fat next is lipoproteins so these lipoproteins are mainly produced in the liver why because the liver and adipose tissue are the two common sites of storage of fat okay so whenever the other cells require fat it will be transported from the storage sites so lipoproteins are mainly produced by the liver and there are four types of lipoproteins very low density lipoprotein intermediate density lipoprotein low density lipoprotein and high density lipoprotein and what is this lipoprotein because it has a lipid part and it has a protein part and protein part comes under apo uh, protein part is called apoprotein it's a particular protein which is identified by the cells just like a receptor hormone interaction so for example uh, the very low density lipid low density lipid and intermediate density lipid has an apoprotein apoprotein b100 and this apoprotein has receptor sites in almost all cells so whenever the lipoproteins very low density lipoprotein or intermediate density lipoprotein or low density lipoprotein reaches these particular cells having receptor for this particular apolipoprotein these apolipoprotein will deliver this uh, fat content into the inside of the cell through pinocytosis you have studied the process of pinocytosis cell eating right so through pinocytosis it will be delivered into the inside of the cell so what is the main function of lipoprotein it is a transport of lipids plasma is mainly uh, formed of water right and the lipids are not water soluble so in order to transport lipids through the plasma it will be join with the proteins and that is called lipoproteins so lipoproteins will be having a protein part and a lipid part and the protein will be the identifying part this protein will be attaching with the particular cell and this protein through and the lipid will be delivered into the inside of the cell so lipoproteins are actually transport form of lipids and first Firstly, very low density lipoproteins are the primary lipoproteins produced in the liver. So, liver will produce very low density lipoprotein and the apoprotein present is again B100 and uh, this apoprotein will carry uh, a lot more triglycerides 
less cholesterol and phospholipids and the name of that globule name of that thing is called very low density lipoprotein and this very low density lipoprotein through plasma it will move through the plasma and it will reach the tissues and wherever the cells uh, that have the receptor for this apolipoprotein b100 it will take up these triglycerides and as time passes what will happen the very low density lipoprotein the triglyceride content inside this very low density lipoprotein will be decreasing because cells will be taking all these triglycerides into inside of the cells and the content the triglyceride content will be decreasing and the cholesterol and phospholipid content will be increasing the percentage of cholesterol and phospholipid content will be increasing so this very low density lipoprotein will be converted into intermediate density lipoprotein half of this intermediate density lipoprotein will be taken back by the liver and the rest of the intermediate density lipoprotein will be there in the circulation right and these intermediate density lipoprotein again reaches the uh, cells the cells will be taking more and more amount of triglycerides and what will happen is at the end there will be very less triglycerides or no triglycerides and the lipoprotein will be carrying what only the cholesterol and phospholipids only and that lipoprotein is called low density lipoprotein so first very low density lipoprotein having more concentration of triglycerides less cholesterol and phospholipids it will be uh, moving through the plasma and uh, many cells will be taking these triglycerides from this lipoprotein and this lipoprotein will be converted into intermediate density lipoprotein and then again more and more triglycerides will be absorbed from this intermediate density lipoprotein and it will be converted into low density lipoprotein so low density lipoprotein will be having a center esterified cholesterol and periphery non esterified phospholipids all the triglycerides have been taken up by the cells of the body and when this low density lipoprotein travels inside the plasma this low density lipoprotein has ability to stick to the endothelium damaged endothelium so if your endothelium is unhealthy due to any reasons it might be due to diabetes mellitus or due to old age due to any reasons this low density lipoprotein uh, will deposit the cholesterol into the inside of the endothelium and once the cholesterol is deposited it will make the surface rough and rough surface will activate again platelets all these things will lead to more and more growing of this cholesterol uh, plaques and it is called atherosclerosis and what is the complication of this atherosclerosis it can block the blood flow so if the blood flow to the heart is blocked it will give rise to myocardial infarction or heart attack and if the blood flow to the brain is blocked what will happen it will give rise to stroke so that is why low density lipoprotein is called bad cholesterol next is high density lipoprotein so this high density lipoprotein uh, will be having 50 percentage of protein and the apoprotein present in high density lipoprotein is apoprotein a1 and a2 this high density lipoprotein is called good cholesterol actually this high density lipoprotein has a scavenging action it can prevent the deposition of cholesterol into the endothelium that or in other words it can prevent the formation of atheromatous plaques so high density lipoprotein is called so i have uh, given a small introduction on what is atherosclerosis so you need to make a small note on atherosclerosis and next is hypercholesteremia you need to make a three mark note on both these headings so what is hypercholesteremia you know that liver can synthesize cholesterol okay and uh, liver is uh, producing all these lipoproteins and intermediate density lipoprotein low density lipo lipoprotein all these lipoprotein uh, has receptors in liver too and liver is responsible for the maintenance of cholesterol levels so if the receptors for this apop lipoprotein is absent in liver what will happen is the liver cells cannot take up all these uh, returning uh, all these cholesterol which is returning back to the liver so the liver will synthesize more cholesterol and it cannot take the 
uh, cholesterol coming from the other tissues. So, this will lead to hypercholesteremia, familial hypercholesteremia because the gene for this, uh, uh, this receptor is absent. So, that will lead to familial hypercholesteremia and there are uh, different, uh, different reasons for hypercholesteremia. So, you need to make a three mark note on hypercholesteremia and atherosclerosis. In this slide, you can see the structure of chylomicron, then LDL and HDL. We have studied that chylomicron also is having an apoprotein. And what is the apoprotein present in LDL? It is apoprotein B100. And what is the apoprotein present in HDL? It is apoprotein A1 and 2. Next is adipose tissue. Again, a three mark question. Very important. Mm? Uh, we have already discussed that main storage depot of fat is adipose tissue and liver. So, there are two main types of adipose tissue. They are the brown adipose tissue and white adipose tissue. And this white adipose tissue is mainly responsible for the storage of fat. And this fat storage cells are modified fibroblast cells and adipose tissue is considered as a loose connective tissue. And regarding the white adipose tissue, they can store fat up to 80 to 95 percentage of their volume. And they store fat in inside a single vacuole. So, the vacuole will be pushing all organelles towards a periphery. And the main thing that main thing that occupies a cell of the white adipose tissue will be this fat. Then, this white adipose tissue forms a subcutaneous fat layer. It will also surround the internal organs. Then, what is the peculiarity of this white adipose tissue? It has the enzyme lipoprotein lipase. So, when the chylomicrons move and reaches near the adipose tissue, the lipoprotein lipase will be digesting this chylomicron. Lipoprotein lipase will be taking the triglycerides inside the chylomicrons and converting it into fatty acids and glycerol and absorbing it into the cell and storing it as liquid liquid triglycerides. So, it will convert again this fatty acids and glycerol into triglycerides and it will store the triglycerides in liquid form. And you know that fat is a source of energy. So, if you recur during starvation etc. If you require this energy from fat what will happen is this adipose tissue will be uh, uh, the tissue lipases will be again digesting this triglycerides into fatty acids and glycerol and the fatty acid will be released into the circulation as free fatty acids and how this fatty acid will move it will it will uh, in jo it will join with the albumin protein hmm, present in the plasma and it will move to the different tissues and this fatty acids can be utilized for the production of energy so the function of white adipose tissue is storage of energy then heat insulation then protection of internal organs and actually it secrete it has some endocrine functions also hmm? uh, it will secrete some hormones like leptin uh, then adiponectin resistin etc and the functions i'll be giving in the next slide next is brown adipose tissue it is abundant in infants but only one percentage in adults. And what is the function of this brown adipose tissue? It will not store fat, but it is concerned with the regulation of body temperature by non-shivering thermogenesis. Uh, these are the endocrine functions of adipose tissue. Adipose tissue, white adipose tissue especially, secrete leptin, adiponectin and resistant hormone. Leptin is very important hormone because leptin is considered as... Uh, an important hormone regulating the feeding and satiety okay so increased level of leptin means it will signal the brain that you have enough energy depot in your body you have energy enough energy depot and if the leptin levels are increased you will get uh, less uh, i mean you don't feel hungry you will get less food intake and increased energy expenditure. So, in obese persons, what will happen is it is just like the insulin resistance. Your body will be having a lot of leptin, but your brain is not getting uh, signals, enough signals from the leptin or uh, your brain, brain is resistant to leptin and that leads to obesity. Uh, so, this leptin is very important hormone. Dear students, 
please uh, write note on lipoproteins and adipose tissue every question paper it's a repeated question both these questions are repeated so please write note on lipoproteins and adipose tissue and you need to study chylomicron structure then micelle structure then absorption of fats this presentation is very very important